Hey everybody, John the other here. Obviously. Now, for those of you who don't know, there is a bill under consideration in the Canadian Parliament which is subject to some controversy called Bill C-16. Before we get into the actual language of the bill, I want to talk about briefly what the proponents, what the supporters of this bill say that it is. They say it is very simple and nothing more than simply the addition to the protection under the Human Rights Code of people based on gender identity, so that gender cannot be the identifying characteristic uh, of attack in hate speech or hate propaganda or uh, similar um, utterances or publications. Now, if that was all it was, I would still be against it because I don't believe in human rights. Now, before anybody falls off their chair or begins screaming, human rights are a body of law, a, a legal structure, that designates a group as a victim group and then gives special empowerment to government or government agencies to enact violence or use force or um, seize money on behalf of that designated victim group, in effect giving that victim group, that supposedly victim group, special powers to enact violence through the state or giving other people special powers to enact violence through the state on the basis of supposedly protecting members of that victim group. Now, I'm very firmly against enacting violence, whether by proxy or directly, but I'm also against putting people in a little special protected bubble because I think it harms them. I think it harms them. I think it harms members of a group to give them a special protected status because then they actually become in need of that special protected status. They, they don't continue to be adult capable people as they were before they had that status. However, so I oppose human rights on that ground, but Bill C-16 is not simply the protection of people based on gender identity under the Human Rights Code. It is a very vaguely worded, very loosely or not defined um, set of qualifications that classify as hate speech and hate propaganda the utterance of anybody who, in among other things, accidentally, accidentally mispronouns somebody based on their gender. So if you accidentally get somebody's pronoun wrong, that their pronoun is Z or Zer or whatever, or they have decided that their pronoun is she when they look like they might be male, and you get it wrong by accident, that is now going to be classified under Bill C-16 as a hate crime with all the attendant penalties attached. Now, this is extremely dangerous. This is a, a move towards a fascist state. And I don't say the word fascist lightly or frivolously or hyperbolically. And, of course, it's subject to a lot of debate, but mostly uh, people aren't even paying attention. People don't even know. However, there's a professor named Jordan Peterson who is about the most badass motherfucker I've ever seen. And we're going to play a clip of an interview that he had where he was um, fighting a swarm of social justice warriors, all of whom were unbelievably and extremely and fucking nakedly dishonest in their attacks on him. And um, you'll see why I say he's a badass in a minute. Let's watch the clip. But it be is political when someone is attacking you on a basis that is personal and that you can't change about yourself. The gentleman who, who sounds like he should be wearing a bow tie is not actually talking about feminism uh, attacking men, that is, attacking them on the grounds that is personal, at the men level of their sexual identity, uh, which they cannot change about themselves. He's talking about mispronouning somebody by accident, that that is uh, apparently a personal attack. Or, alternatively, he's talking about the refusal of Professor Peterson and anybody else of similar mind to use um, the growing collection of extremely silly, made-up, and imaginary gender pronouns that seems to be popular among the wild, purple-haired um, social justice crowd these days. That's a, that is political, and that's when people sometimes become politicized, is when they realize that no matter what they do in the world, there will be people who will continue to attack them on racist grounds, on 
gender and sexual violence grounds, and that's why people start to fight back, and that's why people object. And your, but attempts, on, and your attempts to regulate my language use and I don't care about your language use. Did you catch that? I'll play it again. And your, but attempts, on, and your attempts to regulate my language use and I don't repeated. care about your language use. Weasel Boy just said I don't care about your language use. Bill C-16 is about language use. That's what this debate is about. Language use. And it's about classifying the use of language, the use of non-sanctioned language, like normal pronouns. It's about classifying that as a hate crime. I don't care about language use? It's the, the most dishonest thing I've ever heard. I mean, it's completely silly. It should be the end of the conversation. Everybody should fall on the ground laughing at him for being completely ridiculous. I don't care about your language use. This is what this is about. Language use. Social justice warriors always lie. I care about the safety of the people who are being harmed. I know. Pe people who make your kinds of arguments are always concerned with other people's safety. Before we get distracted by the completely dishonest reply, um, Peterson, Professor Peterson, is making a very good point here. The people who make the social justice argument for protecting other groups other than themselves are always concerned with other people's safety. But it's always false because what they're really concerned with is creating a pretense that they can initiate violence on somebody else's behalf. I'm concerned with my own safety. My, just so that people are aware, my physical, emotional life and livelihood is at risk from being here. This guy's name is Nicholas Matt, and he's a professor of some format of social justice at the University of Toronto, and he has just uttered another stunningly ridiculous and stupid lie, claiming that he is at risk, that his safety is at risk for appearing on this panel. No, no, Professor Peterson's safety is at risk. It is the social justice warriors who are the ones who want to initiate violence, and it is they who are trying to initiate violence through the proxy of the Human Rights Commission against Professor Peterson. And that's not in true of everyone. To mine, say. I don't know about yours because yes, I don't you do. live you know your life. You know perfectly well about mine. I do you know, know that you have tenure and that that's one of the major ways that you're able to do this. Able to do this. And by do this, he means attack and belittle and dehumanize transgender people. That's what he means, or sort of. What he actually means is use pronouns like a conventional speaker of the language called English. But he's conflating that use of pronouns, him, her, they, them, by Professor Peterson. He's conflating that together with um, some sort of conceptual degradation of human beings, dehumanization. And it's a completely absurd, and honestly, it's an outrageous claim. It is an outrageous claim against Professor Peterson or anybody else who doesn't want to use made-up, make-believe, silly-ass pronouns because people are, you know, whatever goofy-ass gender they decide they are that day or the next. Um, but I just want people to be aware that trans and gender, gender diverse... This is a, a moment of some amusement to me, um, and I'm going to play it again. Trans and gender, gender diverse... Trans and gender... Diverse, gender queer. Can't say that word, can you? It used to be one of your words, and now it's banned. Gender queer. Gender queer. Are you trying to say gender queer, and you keep stopping yourself because that's banned now? This is getting funnier and funnier. I mean, it would be funny if it, you weren't uh, bringing state violence against people just for speaking and claiming that they have some motive of hate, even when they do it by accident. <laughs> it, it would be funny. I mean, I'm laughing, but I laugh at tragedy. Communities, and especially uh, people of color, are being targeted and threatened physically. Threatened physically by pronouns? Well, it doesn't make any sense. But if you really want to hear something that doesn't make any sense, wait for this word salad. So free speech is a great idea and equality is a great idea, but we actually can't have those conversations when people are not even able to be present. So free speech is a great idea and equality is a great idea, but we actually can't have those conversations when people are not even able to be present. 
What Nicholas Matt just said is um, gibberish. It's insane. Um, but I'll modify what he said so that it actually makes sense. Free speech is a great idea. Equality is another great idea. But we can't have those conversations when there is the threat of state violence against those exercising free speech. Which, by the way, is the state violence that this professor of social justice is advocating. He's the one preventing free speech and equality. Jordan, let me read this tweet to you and I'll get you to respond to it because I think it's instructive of the conversation that just took place between the two of you. Uh, can someone please explain to Jordan B. Peterson that there's a difference between freedom of speech and freedom from consequence? Do you agree there's a difference? Well, certainly there's a difference. And are you prepared to suffer the consequences that society may deem you need to suffer because of your views? Now, the moderator in this debate has largely been very even-handed um, and has allowed Professor Peterson to respond to all of the ridiculous abuse heaped on him. But this question is misphrased. Uh, are you prepared to suffer the consequences that society, society, in other words, a collective, all of us, you, me, want to heap some consequence on Professor Jordan Peterson? No, this is not society. This is a small cabal of intellectual, self-appointed elites attempting through posturing and tap dancing and um, moral signaling, which is false, to control everybody else's right to freedom of expression, to foreclose the right to freedom of expression, and whether knowingly or not, in doing so, make a more violent society, because free speech is the valve that prevents violence as a conflict resolution tool. So the question is misphrased. It is not society that's going to impose a consequence on Peterson for exercising a basic civil right. It's a small cabal of squirrel-brained cultists in the persons of these intellectual self-appointed elites. I'm, yes, I'm prepared to do that. What so, does that entail? Are you open to learning? Now, that blurted question, are you open to learning? Um, really tells you what you need to know about uh, the social justice professor. But I don't want to dwell on that because um, Professor Peterson's answer to the actual question he was asked is epic. Well, hang That's on. That's not H the question. Hang on, that, that wasn't the question. It's That's true. right. Well, so what am I willing to do? Uh, you know, well, I think that the Ontario Human Rights Tribunal is probably obligated by their own tangled web to, to bring me in front of it. If they find me, I won't pay it. If they put me in jail, I'll go on a hunger strike. I'm not thought... doing this. That's that. Mm -hmm. I'm not using the wor words that other people require me to use, especially if they're made up by radical left-wing ideologues. So I guess you know the story, the rap side, crack side, how I smoke from smack bitches on the back side. Best style, the place where my head rests, 50 shot clip if a nigga want test. The rocket launcher, biggie stomp ya, high as a motherfucking helicopter. That's why I pack a Nina, fuck a misdemeanor, beating motherfuckers like Ike beat Tina.